Praise the Lord. Once again, welcome to 7 for 7. We want to give the Lord honor, glory, and praise for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father, Lord, we rejoice. We rejoice in you and we're grateful for who you are. And I just ask God that as we prepare to move forward, God, that you would magnify yourself. I pray, God, that you give us a hunger and a thirst after your righteousness, a hunger and a thirst to pursue your kingdom. Now, God, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, God, that this is the day that you have made. We decree and declare, God, that you would go before us. And, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts and that you would protect us and, and guide and lead us, Heavenly Father, into all truths. So we yield ourselves, Heavenly Father, that we might be used, because we say, here am I, send me, that we might be used to advance your kingdom, that we might be used, that lives would be forever changed. So, Lord, in, empower us, your people. Heavenly Father, the body of Christ, to walk in its destiny. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I was pondering about our time together today, and the scripture, Psalms 150, came to my mind. It says, let everything praise the Lord. Let's go there. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a sultry harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon a loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high symbol. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. The Lord wants us to operate in praise. Praise magnifies who he is, right? Praise is revelation. I need you to get a hold of this today because praise is, 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 is what we do when we come into the revelation of who he is. So we, so we recognize who he is. And when we come to the place of recognizing who he is, then we can magnify him and glorify him. And then we can begin to look at what he's done in our life. And God wants us to come to a place of praise, which is revelation of who he is and then and then God wants us to move into uh, a place called um worship. Now I know that that many of us think if you will that praise and worship is just segments or components of a service. But praise and worship aren't just components to a service. Because praise, like I said, it is the revelation of who he is and how he and what he's done for your life and how he's provided for you, right? And then God wants us to move into a place called worship, and worship is submission. Worship is us submitting, if you will, to God, adoring him, moving into his presence, right? Um, and, 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 and then when we praise and worship, if you will, the dynamic begins to shift. When there's praise and worship, we move into the glory and the glory is the essence or his manifestation of his very presence. The Lord is everywhere, but, but, but when, when we have released praise, when we've come to a place of worship, God begins to inhabit our praises, right? God inhabits the praises of his people, so he inhabits his praise. And as we as he inhabits, true, true praise comes to, to worshipers. And then as we begin to worship, then, then, then God sees our heart of submission and he allows his glory to come down. Just like in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, when Isaiah said uh, that he saw the Lord high and lifted up, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in the year that Uzziah died. 
You know, in the year that the king had died, he saw the king high and lifted up. Why did it take someone that was so of great prominence or so important to him? Why did it take for them to die for him to see the Lord? Well, perhaps they didn't need to die, but, but, but he did not see the revelation of who God was, if you will, in the fullness until that person was taken out of his life, right? Sometimes there are people, places, and things that get in our way from seeing the trueness, the fullness of God. You see, he didn't see what God was doing. He didn't see who God was. But when he had died, if you will, his, he became more sensitive to God. And as he became more sensitive to God, if you will, he, he tapped into the very uh, essence and presence of God. He saw the cherubims, if you will, uh, flying back and forth. And they saw, he saw them saying, he's holy. He's holy. He's holy is the Lord of hosts. And he is the Lord of the host. He is the Lord of the army. He is our commander in chief. He is the one that we cry to that says holy. And, and he wants to know, will we be the people that will praise him? That we would praise him in his sanctuary but not merely allowing our praise to be confined to the sanctuary. That we would praise his greatness, that we would praise every dimension, that we would praise him for blessing our lives. That we would praise him in such a way, hallelujah, giving him honor, glory, and praise, right? That we would move to the, such a degree that we allow, if you will, his Shekinah glory to fill the place. And when the Shekinah glory filled the place, it, would, it moves things. And, and, and Isaiah heard them talking about who will go for us. And he said, here am I. Send me. He's calling to you today. He says, who will go for us? Who go to your job? Who go to your family? Who go to the grocery store? Who will go to the gas station for the Lord? Who will go into all the world, into every man's world, and represent the king? And Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. But he said, I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. He recognized that he needed the glory of the Lord. He recognized that he needed the sanctification of the Lord. And so I challenge you today to be like Isaiah and, and allow the Lord to bring, if you will, the burning, sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost and to touch our lips, not only to touch our lips, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, if you will, but to touch our hearts and let there be a transformation in our life so that we can go forth and, and, and represent and represent him. So here we are today. We say, here am I, send me. We'll see you next time at 7 for 7. Be blessed.